This is the story of one of the biggest corruption scandals of all time. A fraud that is estimated to have cost one of the poorest countries in the world its entire GDP for a year. A story that would not have been possible without ingredients such as unlimited expectations, unbridled greed and country risk. Today on Visual Politic, we are talking about the tuna bonds of Mozambique. Let's get cracking. In Africa, the forgotten continent, the last region of the world to join modernity, the first two decades of the 21st century were impressive. Poverty began to fall sharply and most African economies began to take off. Suddenly, the demand for infrastructure and projects of all kinds made many governments of the continent rush to the markets in search of funds. Markets opened their arms wide and the illusion of sharing a part of that huge wave of prosperity. And do you know what? Our protagonist in this video, Mozambique, was not the only one of the countries rushing towards the future, but became one of the most brilliant economies in the whole continent. Institutional reforms, foreign investment, tourism, and the discovery of a huge gas fields in the Rumuva River Basin in Mozambique's northern coast bordering Tanzania seem to paint a very promising future. During the first decade of this century, Mozambique's economic growth was around 7% per year. And that was before the exploration of one of the largest natural gas discoveries in the world was launched. To give you an idea, while in 2010, the size of Mozambique's economy stood at around $10 billion, IMF forecasts suggest that by 2021, it will exceed $30 billion and $75 billion by 2025. Yes, it still made it a very poor country, but the expected evolution was colossal. However, the reality has been totally different. In 2021, the size of this South African country's economy is less than $16 billion. And although things are expected to improve, the numbers will still fall far short of the initial forecast. And even in recent years, the trajectory has been very different from what was expected. Instead of good news, the country faced default, a huge budget adjustment and capital flight. And the burning question is, why? What happened that suddenly caused the reality to be so different from the initial projection? Well, visual politic fans, the simplest explanation has to do with a financial operation, a ruse, that made this country's economy face a terrible nightmare. Check this out. The poisoned gift of the tuna bonds. The year was 2010. Things were going well for Mozambique. The national economy had begun to take off and gas fields promised unlimited profits. However, at a certain point in that year, a series of meetings and agreements took place that would mark the future of the country for more than a decade. Executives from Privinvest, a well-known French Lebanese shipbuilding company, together with executives from the Swiss bank Credit Suisse and senior government officials, put a business proposal on the table. At the time, markets were embracing the high yields of African bonds and Mozambique would soon be exploiting its huge hydrocarbon deposits. So why wait? The country could issue a huge amount of debt to finance the development of new productive sectors. After all, natural gas will soon pay all of the bills. Well, no sooner said than done. All parties, joined by the Russian bank VTB, set to work to create a huge fishing industry in the country. problem? Well, the problem is that Mozambique's interests were never on the table. You see, during the following three years, Mozambique's government created three public companies, Ematum, Mozambique Asset Management, and Pro Indicus. Surprisingly, the two main shareholders or direct owners were the Ministry of Defense and the Intelligence and Security Service. Yeah, that's right. The ultimate shareholders of the proposed fishing companies. The fact is that once formed between 2013 and 2014, the Swiss bank Credit Suisse and the Russian VTB organized a round of funding to move these projects forward. In total, just over $2 billion, an amount that may seem small to us until we realize that this represented almost 15% of the country's entire GDP and more than 20% of the entire foreign debt in just three operations. Of this $2 billion, almost half consisted of bonds placed on the international market with a yield of 8.5%, a profitability that made them a huge success and the demand exceeded the supply several times over. They were the now infamous tuna bonds. However, the reality, the stark reality, is that it was all a kind of huge ruse to fleece one of the poorest countries in the world. For example, the parties involved took advantage of the fact that investment in Africa was in vogue in order to pull off this bizarre operation. The two banks that handled the deal pocketed close to $200 million in bank fees and commissions. That means that almost 10% of all the financing went to the banks that handled the deal. Totally disproportionate. 
what's more, the prospectus and feasibility studies were pure science fiction. For example, international investors were told that Mozambique had been catching around 200,000 tonnes of tuna per year. The reality is that, according to the National Fisheries Office, catches in 2015 between foreign and domestic vehicles amounted to just 6,000 tonnes. In addition, revenue estimates were based on the sale of tuna at more than $10,000 per tonne, a totally unreasonable price on the wholesale market. But do you know what? Nobody cared. You know, investing in Africa was all the rage. Details were the last thing on anyone's minds. And among the investors were such important entities such as the Portuguese Commercial Bank and United Bank for Africa. The fact is that everyone got their share, except for the Mozambicans themselves. The issuing banks pocketed $200 million. The military spent most of the funds obtained not on fishing boats, but on military boats and equipment. And the company that owned the boats sold them at a significant premium. And of course, politicians were not left out in the picture. Ferraris, Rolls Royces, BMWs, even a plane from France loaded with 7,400 bottles of wine has been documented. And above all, lots and lots of cash. In total, audits have estimated the money that went directly to bribes as totaling up to $500 million. The tuna companies were created not to operate, but as vehicles to milk the cow. The idea was that the gas profits would pay for such a gap in the public budget that no one would notice anything. So the debt was kept secret and not included in the government accounts. This is known as the hidden debt. The problem, the big problem, is when the gas money didn't arrive, everything started to fall apart. The debacle. In 2016, when the Wall Street Journal published all the details about the debt incurred, the hysteria was tremendous. International donors and the IMF itself immediately stopped their contributions, plunging government revenues. This, in turn, meant the government was unable to pay the bills. Then, ta-da, came the spectacular default, the collapse of public spending, the economic crisis, the flight of capital, and the devaluation of the currency. Foreign debt became unpayable. GDP growth plummeted, unemployment soared, and almost a million people fell below the poverty line. tuna bonds were too cumbersome. For example, as a result of this operation, the debt burden in relation to state revenues increased more than sixfold. To give you an idea, according to the calculations made by the Centre for Public Integrity in Mozambique, along with the Christian Michelson Institute in Norway, the economic cost exceeded $11 billion, the equivalent of the country's entire gross domestic product for 2016. A disaster that would punish the country for years and that, by the way, has become a new nightmare for Credit Suisse, a bank marked lately by scandals such as the Arcogos Capital scandal that we already covered here on Visual Politic in collaboration with Value School. Mozambique is reeling from the Credit Suisse tuna bonds scandal. The Swiss bank was fined $475 million. The idea that this is over for Credit Suisse is completely wrong. There is a lot of litigation in the English courts at the moment and that is not going to go away. If anything, it's going to go on and on and on. Natasha Harrison, managing partner of Boys Schiller Flexner, a US law firm that has sued the Swiss bank on behalf of several creditors. The whole operation is now in court, but the damage has been done. The collusion of big banks, politicians, and unscrupulous businessmen, along with the lack of attention to detail of international investors, caused a huge catastrophe in one of the poorest countries in the world. So there you have the cursed history of the tuna bonds. Remember to pay attention to the details, to be wary of the lack of transparency and legal certainty, and easy profits, because they can end up turning into a huge, nightmare. But now, it's over to you. Do you think Mozambique should be dumped with the repayment of this huge debt of more than $4 billion in total, plus interest? How could this kind of fraud be avoided? Leave us your comments below. And if you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to all of us here at Visual Politic. All the best, and I'll see you next time.